Thanks to AI, a woman who was paralyzed for 18 years after a stroke is now able to speak again thanks to a brain implant and AI. So today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about this. As you know, one of my favorite areas is the medical advancements and help that AI can actually bring to mankind. So let's jump into it. Welcome to the AI Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Make sure that you go to AIbox.ai, link in the show notes, to join the waitlist for our new AI platform. We're going to be launching an incredible platform that allows you to build anything you want with workflows um, in AI. So you're able to chain together chat GPT and image generators and audio generators to make really powerful apps for your organization, or you can host them on our marketplace and actually generate royalties from them. So make sure to go to AIbox.ai and join the waitlist. In addition, if you like the podcast, if you could do me a massive favor and please leave us a review on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast. This helps me be able to get better guests on here as they check the reviews to see how you guys are liking it. So if you could please do that, I would really, really appreciate it. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. The first thing I want to talk about here, and I guess the really big headline, is that essentially this is a very remarkable advancement in the field of neurotechnology. So researchers from the University of California, San Francisco, the US or UCSF, and the University of California, um, Berkeley, along with a team from Stanford University, have developed separate yet transformative systems that allow individuals with speech impairment conditions to communicate. So these developments were all published in the scientific journal Nature. Um, and I really think that these bring on a whole new era in the human machine interface that could very drastically improve the quality of life for many, many people that are suffering from um, paralysis or conditions like Lou um, Gingers disease, ALS, and a lot of other ailments. And I think that AI is able to do some really incredible things here. So kind of going on the backstory about this one in, woman in particular, um, back in 2005, Ann Johnson was left super, she was left severely paralyzed and speechless after she had a stroke. Now, this is a condition that can happen after strokes. So despite the inability to vocalize, her brain continues to obviously generate language signal, signals. So UCSF and Berkeley researchers implanted a device on the surface of her brain, um, specifically in the regions associated with speech and language. So the implant featured 253 electrodes that kind of just captured all of the brain signals, which were then transferred to a computer bank via a port and a cable installed on her head. AI algorithms then translate these signals into sentences um, articulated by a digital avatar, right? So they, they created like a digital avatar of her speaking and just based off of her, the brain signals that they could pull and the AI decoding it. Now they have a, this digital avatar of herself, which is talking. Absolutely incredible. So um, Dr. Edward Chang, who's the chair of neurological, um, neurological surgery at UCSF and is the author of the study um, in particular when it got published, expressed his super, super, um, he was super happy with the results. And he said, quote, there's nothing that can convey how satisfying it is to see something like this actually work in real time. I mean, honestly, like, think about this. It had been 18 years since this stroke happened. So this is absolutely incredible. Um, the technology re essentially translated Johnson's brain signals into speech at a rate of nearly 80 words per minute with a median accuracy of around 75 when using a vocabulary of 1,024 words. So to give the avatar a more kind of personalized touch, the system actually used a recording of her voice from her wedding and incorporated the facial movements and emotional expressions. So it was actually able to use her voice, um, right? So using, there's all sorts of technology. There's 11 labs and all sorts of others that you can train an AI clone of your voice. And while a lot of people talk about like some of the downsides, they're like, oh no, well, you know, what if uh, hackers or bad actors train um, AI model on your voice and try to trick people that you know into over the phone to do things, right? Like there's all sorts of like bad use cases. This is an incredible use case 
Um, she was able to clone her voice and is able to um, speak again thanks to this technology. So in parallel, a Stanford University sh uh, study showcased some really similar technology that helped Pat Bennett. That's a woman with ALS. And Bennett's system involved implanting two small sensors on her brain. So enabling a software program to decode signals and convert them into words on a computer screen. This technology achieved a rate of 62 words per minute and was about 91% accurate when, ben, uh, when Bennett used a 50-word vocabulary. So I will say the difference here is, of course, this one is a little bit slower, a little bit more accurate, um, but also I, I think it's probably the accuracy is just due to the fact that there's only 50 words in the vocabulary of this accurate one, whereas the other one had over a thousand words. So, I mean, if it was me, I think going with the 75% accuracy on a thousand words, in my opinion, would have been would have been better than 90%, uh, 91% accuracy on just 50 words. 50 words seems like not a lot, but maybe I just have a lot of words to express what I'm saying. So, I mean, it's up to everyone. But anyways, both of these are incredible technologies. Um, both systems, I think, mark a really significant advancement over previous attempts at similar technologies. Um, so they had w uh, Francis Willett was the lead author of the Stanford study. And um, Francis said, it is now possible to imagine a future where we could restore fluent conversation to someone with paralysis. So I will say, however, that these technologies aren't without limitations. Um, editorial commentary alongside the studies pointed out that the systems currently demand the expertise of very highly skilled researchers for operation and maintenance. Um, and moreover, both Johnson and Bennett have some residual facial movement, leaving questions about kind of the effectiveness of this technology for individuals without any muscle control. Um, so Dr. Jamie Henderson, who is a neurosurgery professor at Stanford, acknowledged that the constraint, essentially just acknowledged those constraints there, but also kind of emphasized uh, the potential for ongoing improvements in here, right? I think we we can see a lot of uh, room for this to improve and grow. I think what's really cool here is seeing a lot of different research teams at different places working on the same technology and coming up with results, right? Albeit they're slightly they're slightly different, right? Some of them have higher accuracy rates or higher word counts or all sorts of things. But I think it, like honestly, developing these things all kind of independent, finding out really great use cases for this. Eventually, the you know the best models will all converge, um, and we're going to build something really incredible. But this is a major problem, and this is incredible the way they're trying to solve this. So I think as the technology continues to evolve, it really paves the way for more adaptable, efficient, and possibly even wireless communication solutions for these. Uh, and for people that are unable to speak, right? Because currently this is like an implant in your brain. If you look at the pictures, there's a wire coming straight out of her head into the system. And um, so being able to do this wireless, I think will be a big deal. I think probably what Neuralink and others are doing is going to also be able to help in a lot of these cases. So for Johnson, I think this technology is going to make her aspirations of becoming a counselor a reality. And for Bennett, the chance to stay connected with the world becomes more attainable. I think despite the hurdles that um, obviously are going to lie ahead, I think these groundbreaking studies point to a future where barriers to human communication um, can be significantly lowered, if not entirely eliminated. And this is something that is very, very exciting for me as I'm following this field. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate me wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure you check out our Discord channel and also our Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share software tools, prompts that we're using in everyday AI. I'll leave a link for those in the description below.